So a video you guys wanted to see was a feeding video and I decided we're gonna feed all of the fish. However, we're just gonna be feeding them what they are going to eat today. I feed a varied diet and it varies from day to day and we're gonna talk about that. I wanna show you types of food that I'm feeding, why I'm feeding it, of course, uh, how much and how often. Let's start with the Trophius Aquarium. The Trophius, you guys will remember, are Trophius Icola, a Lake Tangayikin fish. There's about 20 or 25 in there right now, and that is a colony that's now starting to become more and more established, and some of the males are becoming uh, more apparent. It does look like I have a nice balance of one to five, meaning one male to five females. With that said, I should probably interrupt this video. I know that you guys want a complete breakdown of every tank that I have and lots of information about each individual fish. So if you guys do want to see that, let me know in the comment section below or simply give me a thumbs up and I'll know that way. Back to the trophies. These guys are a herbivoric fish for the most part, and if you don't give them what they need, they can develop things like bloat, which can eventually kill them. So you wanna be very careful with these fish. One of the key things with these guys is to make sure that they are in an established aquarium. Usually that will give you more success simply because they do have some algae to graze on. So I don't really do a whole lot of maintenance on this aquarium, although it does look really clean. It certainly isn't. There is algae on almost everything, but they do pick away at it. Now these guys are only fed twice a day. I feed them a herbivore diet, mainly basing it off of plants like spirulina. So I make sure like the number one ingredient is typically spirulina and I'll feed them a flake or even a pellet at times, sometimes a combination of both. Brands doesn't really matter, so I'm not gonna get into brands in this video. I just kind of pay attention to what the actual ingredients are the size of the food and the texture based off what the fish needs. Now I should also mention that when I'm feeding, all pumps are shut off. I don't want any of the food getting sucked down to the filter and I leave them off for usually about 30 minutes. I let the fish consume the food from anywhere from five to 10 minutes. If they can't eat it all in that amount of time, usually I'm feeding too much. However, with some of these tanks, there are some less dominant fish that do not get to the food in time. So at times I will overfeed the aquarium so they, they can get some as well. Trophies are always a fun fish to feed though. I do try to feed them a pelletized food. However, I mix it up day to day just to make sure they're accepting anything I offer. And now I prefer pellets over flakes simply because pellets are, are like a far more condensed state than flakes, but flakes are a little bit more easier to digest and faster eating, so it kind of depends on the fish that you're keeping. Let's move up to the Malawi fish. Up above is the Lake Malawi peacocks. It has a number of different types of male peacocks with a heavy concentration of OB peacocks. I must admit, I do like them a lot, so well, there's a lot in there. These guys get a very similar diet to the trophies, however, they don't depend largely on uh, a vegetable matter diet. However, today I offered them some spirulina based foods, but for the most part, I will feed them something more omnivorous that has a uh, nice amount of protein content in it as well, upwards of about 30% protein content. These guys can be predators, but they do need some uh, vegetable matter in their diets as well. And I like to feed them foods that uh, have lots of color enhancing in it, like astaxanthin, for example, that's a very popular uh, color enhancer in fish foods. These guys eat once a day, and I usually feed them uh, pellets. Pellets because, again, they only need to eat a few pellets each, and those pellets will expand in their bellies, of course, once they uh, begin become wet, and they fatten up quite easily. I do find also that I control their aggression by only feeding once a day at the exact same time every single day. Which brings up a point of when do I actually feed? Usually I feed them at noon time. Noon being their noon, not our noon. See, as fish keepers, we control everything about our aquariums, including their life cycles and the lighting cycles and their metabolisms and so forth. So noon time for them is pretty much four o'clock in the afternoon for me. Their lights come on at a certain time and go off at a certain time, but noon is always noon to them. Right beside them is that rainbow aquarium that we just recently set up. Now these guys will eat just about anything. I feed them a variety of foods from flakes to pellets to frozen foods like brine shrimp or uh, mysis or even some krill, things like that, and they'll eat pretty much anything. These guys eat twice a day as well. 
twice a day simply because there's so many in there, I wanna make sure that everybody's getting something to eat. Now it does look like in these videos that I'm overfeeding, but with the pump still on, it blows the food around and distributes it a lot more evenly throughout the aquarium so all the fish have an opportunity to get some. Plus it keeps the food in motion, almost triggering their uh, instinct to chase after that food and eat it, making it more acceptable typically. Rainbows get more of a tropical diet, like something that is a bit more commonly used for almost all fish, like community fish diets, which has a little bit of everything in there for them, and they do quite well on that. The Waru Aquarium. This is one of my favorite tanks because it means so much to me, and it's also one of my most naturally looking aquariums, in my opinion, uh, and a few others have mentioned that as well. These guys, the Waru Cichlid, is largely a herbivore. It will eat your plants, if you put them in there, it doesn't matter what they are. In fact, sometimes I, I feed them romaine lettuce. They love that, but for the most part, I will also feed that tank a variety of food simply because there's two different types of fish in there requiring two different uh, diet requirements. Those king tetras are a uh, community type fish that do require plant as well as protein diet, but the waru, they can uh, eat plant or uh, more of a meaty diet like protein based, but that's gonna have a huge impact on their coloration as adults. To get that awesome contrast, you do wanna feed more of a heavily plant-based diet. But today I fed them a mixture of pellets, granules, and flakes. Uh, a combination of spirulina flakes, some uh, community granules, and of course, some cichlid pellets. Uh, this gives everybody an opportunity to have some, and it's a mixed diet, but I also like feeding these guys uh, some frozen foods every once in a while. Not necessarily too often though. The Angelfish Aquarium, probably one of the more easier aquariums to feed because they'll eat almost anything I offer, but given the fact that angelfish have such a tiny mouth, we have to keep that into consideration as well. We can't feed them big cichlid pellets because they simply can't eat them. But today they got a mixture of frozen foods, including some brine shrimp, some mysis shrimp, and of course a little bit of krill. Angelfish tend to do best on a mixed diet, more protein based, these guys only eat once a day. There's lots in there. There's about 25 or 28 angels, something like that. Uh, and because of their high bio load, I don't want to overfeed that aquarium, so I'm very cautious with it. Again, I'm only feeding them once a day at 12 o'clock. A lot of people feed their fish two and three times a day. A lot of the times it's overfeeding them. It's creating other ways. They don't necessarily need it. If your fish are healthy and, dis and, and exhibit uh, proper body form and shape and they're not skinny or anything like that, you're probably feeding enough. But after that, it's usually a, way too much. As for the discus, well these guys, all my discus have always gotten my homemade foods. I've shown you guys how to make this several times in the past. I just snap off a few pieces after it's been frozen and drop them in. As time goes by, that food will defrost and uh, they can pick it apart a little bit more easier. However, there's 16 discus in there. There used to be some uh, cardinal tetras. I've removed the cardinals because for me, it was just a, a personal thing. Uh, they were taking away from the discus. My eyes were always watching the cardinals as opposed to the discus, and I want it to be a discus aquarium. I know some people won't like that, but I don't know. I just prefer just the discus only, especially in like six to eight months from now when they get a lot larger, it's gonna be far more impressive. The food that I'm feeding though is heavily protein diets consisting of some beef heart, uh, shrimp, tilapia, scallops, and a little bit of astaxanthin powder, but you could also add in paprika to help with the oranges like these guys are getting now because they will be a red-orange color eventually. Those guys only eat once a day as well, and the benefit to feeding this food is that if they ever breed in that aquarium, the adults are already eating it, so I can continue to feed that, but the juvenile fry that'll eventually uh, be in that aquarium, potentially, will eat that food as well so I can wean them off their parents really easily and that's how I had a lot of success with breeding discus in the past. The last aquarium on this rack that currently has fish in it is the Asian Aquarium. Now we haven't gone over a lot of details on this tank, in fact I haven't actually really showed it at all and we'll have to go through a detailed explanation eventually like we have uh, through all the rest of them. But the main fish in this aquarium are a handful of pearl gourami as well as some Harlequin Las Rasboras and some Dario Dario. Now this aquarium is still something that I've changed a few times. I'm not completely satisfied with it, uh, but feeding it is still fun. And these guys got the same thing that the angelfish got earlier. 
uh, I do find that they enjoy it and it allows all of the fish to get a little bit because there's so many different mouth sizes within that aquarium. This is a good diet for them. But how usually I'll feed different types of community type foods like some flake foods and very small pellet foods and granules and they'll eat those as well. Day to day berries out here. Moving along, we get to Frank's tank. Now Frank begins his day off with some flower horn pellets. I just drop a small handful in there and he'll eat them all. That'll fill his belly up, but we'll come back to this aquarium later because we feed it another food later on in the day as well. As for the 375, you guys will remember this is a newly established aquarium with a ton of uh, clown loaches. We got 50 large clown loaches as well as I believe it's 17 uh, vieja. There's three different species in there. I start that tank off with some cichlid pellets just because I know the vieja will eat them first and that kind of fills them up and allows the other foods that I'm going to be offering to get down to the clown loaches. However, if the clown loaches are hungry enough, they will come up and eat the pellets like they do for me usually. Uh, and then I decided to give them a treat today. So they got the brine shrimp krill as well as the mysis shrimp that the angels as well as the Asian tank got as well. Again, this looks like I'm feeding a tremendous amount of food, but they consume it all and return pumps are shut off. So it's not like it's getting sucked down to the filter polluting the aquarium. The stingray tank. I feed this aquarium twice a day. For the Asian arowana, I start them off with some arowana sticks. This is a prepared food that you could purchase. Uh, I feed it for a couple of reasons. One is to ensure that they eat whatever I offer. I want to keep them on a prepared diet as well as a homemade diet. Uh, and, and getting your arowana on anything but live can be difficult. So having all four of my Asian arowana eating prepared food as well as homemade food is kind of a big deal. So I don't want to ruin that for them. They do enjoy the pelletized food. It offers lots of color enhancers uh, and kind of just ensures that they're getting whatever they want. And then of course we come back and feed them the homemade food that I've shown you guys how to prepare in the past. And this contains some fresh market shrimp. We've got some tilapia uh, fillet in there or filet. Uh, we've got some scallops in there. Uh, and, and that's pretty much all that rounds out that diet. And that is a very fresh diet to be able to offer your fish is to know exactly what's in that and know that, you know, a lot of the times we look at the top three ingredients of what's in a fish food. The rest are kind of fillers and color enhancers. I focus on the top three for this tank and give them kind of what is the best, but the rays absolutely love it. The arowana will eat it as well. However, depending on the time of day that I'm feeding these guys, these guys usually eat earlier in the morning when the lights are a little dimmer, the arowana will strike harder. But when I have all the lids off and bright lights shining down and then I'm starting to film, a lot of the times the arowana won't perform for us. So keep that in mind when watching these guys eat. Anyways, feeding the whole gallery takes about 30 to 35 minutes, and that includes defrosting some foods, getting it all ready. Uh, but I do it once a day, and that's part of my maintenance routine. Of course, I have to still take care of everything in here, and that's something that I'll do for you guys in the near future, is make a video on how I take care of the over 4,000 gallons of water within this uh, gallery. And 4,000 gallons isn't a tremendous amount of water if it's only one or two tanks, really, because you're only focusing on one or two tanks. But when it's 13 different large aquariums that all have different needs that can become a little unique and if you guys want to see that video let me know in the comments section below anyways hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you join me this coming sunday i think i'm going to be ready to show you the scape for the saltwater aquarium if i can get it ready in time